inside of you. You. Do you understand what that actually means? You're the temple of God. The Holy Spirit dwells inside of you. Do you remember in the holy, in the most holy place, you had the Ark of the Covenant. You had the two angels and their wings touched. What was in the middle of the, their wings? The Shekinah presence. And what was that? What was that Shekinah presence, God? It was the presence of God, the glory of God, right? Manifested in that small little spot. You realize that the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you today. You are the temple of God. God lives in you. Now, this is why Christians have to submit to the indwelling of the Spirit. Because you cannot live a lifestyle in the pig pen and expect the Holy Spirit to dwell inside of you. Is that right? When God has called you out of sin, He didn't call you out so you can go right back into it. Is that right? But because the presence of God lives inside of you, this is why Jesus promised you victory over sin. Is that right? Well, you guys, you don't, you don't seem too convinced. <laughs> okay, let's look. Let's look. Verse 20 says, what? Moreover, the law entered, why? So that the offense might, what? Uh, what does that mean? That means that the law came in so you can see how sinful sin really is. God does not tolerate sin. God loves sinners. But what happens if a sinner stands in the presence of God and sees him face to face? That person's sin will cause them to... God will break out against them, as the Old Testament says. It has nothing to do with the anger or the temperament of God. It's just that sin can't stand in the presence of a holy God. And yet, God is able to live inside of us, and He wants to recreate us. Isn't that what the Bible says? Mm -hmm. That you have become a new creation. The old has passed away. All things are made new. What's actually made new? Your heart. Your heart. Another word for that that you understand is your character. Right? Your character. Now listen. Let me ask you now. I want you to think about this. Do you want to take your character to heaven? Do you want to stand before God with your character that you have right now? Now I didn't ask you about the character you had before you gave your heart to Jesus Christ. I asked you about your character you have right now. Are you ready to stand before God with that character? So listen. So this new creation isn't about God making my character better. It's about giving me a whole new character. Amen. And that character is the character of His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Right? Think about this. This is justification and sanctification. Justification allows God to work in my heart to put me in a right standing with God that when He looks at me, He sees me as if I've never sinned. And because He sees me as if I've never sinned, then His reality will become reality. Because Jesus will now be made in my heart. And my character is no longer me, but it is Him. Let me ask you a question. What changed Peter from the guy who denied Jesus not once, not twice, but three times? And the last time was to a little girl who was standing right <coughs> beside him at fire. To the man who preached a sermon and converted 3,000 people through the power of the Holy Spirit. What made that change? Love the Holy Spirit. He finally put away Peter, and he became Jesus. Who was he preaching? Was he preaching Peter? No. Or was he preaching Jesus? Jesus? What made Paul, the guy that was killing Christians, Saul, excuse me, into Paul, the guy who suffered so much and gave up his life and, and, and preached the gospel all the way to the end? What made that change? Because he got rid of himself, and he was no longer Saul, but he became an ambassador for Jesus. Let me ask you a question. When people saw him, and they accepted this God that he was talking about, who was nailed to a cross, that was only for criminals and the basis of society. That's what happened to you. 
okay, you're saying that's your Savior? And to the Jews, it's like, the Bible says anybody nailed to a tree is cursed of God. And that's your Savior? And Paul never wavered and never flinched in his faith in the preaching of Christ. Why? Because it was no longer Paul in his selfishness, but he became like Christ. Amen. This is what God does for us, brothers and sisters. So, let me ask because let me give you uh, some verses that you can meditate on when you go home. Patty mentioned this first one. Turn to John chapter 15, verse 5. John 15, verse 5. You know what that says? John chapter 15, verse 5. Ricky, do you have that? I'll just kind of go. I am the vine, you are the branches. Yep. I'm not there yet, but I'm getting there. I am the vine, you are the branches. And my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear fruit. You are already clean because of the world. Wait a minute. Because of the word. I'm sorry. Yes. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. So what can you do without Jesus? <laughs> now, now, what's he talking about here? See, because there are a lot of people in this world that have not accepted him and rejected him. And they're able to drive a car. They're able to go to school. They can breathe in and out. They can live. What's he talking about here? Spiritual. Any spiritual. Anything that will go through the fire. Listen, what he's talking about is being changed into his image and being made right in the sight of a holy God. You can do nothing without me. It has nothing to do with your works or your performance or what you do or don't do. It doesn't have anything to do with what day you choose to go to church on. It doesn't have anything to do with what you choose to eat or not to eat. How you are saved is through Jesus Christ and him alone. Amen. The reason why we go to church on God's day is because the Word says so. And because we love God and what Christ has done for us, I want to please Him. I want to do what makes Him happy. Amen. And so I know that there are certain activities and behaviors that would make Him happy. Now, gentlemen, all those of you who are married, raise your hand if you like to please your wife. Everybody that's married better raise their hand. <laughs> go. Now, how many of you deliberately go out of your way to do things that's going to upset her? <laughs> Raise your hand. Anybody? Nobody brave enough to say, yeah, I do that. <laughs> okay, so listen. I didn't put my hand up. <laughs> no, so, no, she didn't. No, she didn't. Now, there's another person I was laughing at in the back. Listen. Why do you go out of your way to please your spouse or to please those people you love? It's because you love them, right? Doesn't it work the same way with your God? Sure. It's pretty simple. Okay, here's a couple other verses for you. Turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Get a chance to write this down. Ephesians chapter 2. Let's look at verses 15 through 22. <laughs> Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making, what's that word? Peace. peace. And that he might reconcile, I want you to key on these words, peace and reconcile, that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who are far off and to those who are near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with who? With the saints and the members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together 
grows into a holy temple in the Lord. All that is saying is that to the Jew, to the Gentile, and if you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile, that we have been made one. There's no more separation between the two. And that we are one, and we have access to God the Father through Jesus Christ the Son, and we have become part of God's household. We are children of God. Amen. As you leave here today, I want you to think about how much God loves you. He has done everything for you, and all He asks is that you love Him back. How does your children show you love is it by disobeying what you tell them to do? Or is it by doing what you tell them to do? <laughs> by realizing that the liberty we give them is not license to do what just pleases us. <clears throat> do you guys ever remember? Linda, I saw your hand up, so hold on to that. Do you guys ever remember a time when you really hurt your mother? Yeah. And I mean, she didn't have to say anything to you. You just saw it in her eyes and her facial expression. You know that feeling? Where you just, now that you've become adults, has that turned around and have your kids really hurt you? What was it that actually hurt? Usually it has something to do with what they did or what they said, right? So listen, when you've accepted Jesus Christ, and he's buried that old man of sin, and he's raised you up in the newness of life, he gives you the opportunity to think new, to speak new, to act new, and to be new. That you are no longer slaves to sin, but you can actually have power to overcome sin through his power and him dwelling inside of you. That's the gospel. You don't have to be slaves to sin doesn't have to control you. You have victory in Christ. Amen. Closing in this morning is hymn number 518. <laughs>
and to allow you to change our hearts and to change our characters. Father, I pray that as we leave here today, we will be built up in Christ and that we will have the strength to endure whatever comes this week. Father, whether we live, whether we die, we do all these things in Christ. And so we have a hope that this world cannot grasp nor understand. But Father, they're looking for something. And what they're looking for, we have if we have Jesus living in our hearts. Father, I pray that you will give us strength, that you will give us assurance of your love and your salvation, but most of all, assurance of your presence with us every day. And help us to truly be ambassadors for Jesus Christ as we continue to work for you. Father, I pray that your return in Jesus Christ will be soon and that we will be ready and that we will finally be able to go home. For this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen.